So this question comes from Martin L. And it's interesting because it's one of those types of technology that has been around for well over a decade um, and hasn't really gotten to the place that most of us thought it would get to by now. Uh, so a question for the show. VDI, Virtual Desktop Infrastructure, is becoming more popular and gaining some traction. Currently the two major players are Citrix and VMware. Both these solutions are geared pretty much to the enterprise except for Citrix which had a small business solution with it, which they just announced will be discontinued. Given that you still need to buy physical thin client workstations as well as VDI licensing, does VDI makes sense for the small to med medium business market or is it something similar to server virtualization where we need to give it more time to be accepted in large enterprise environment and then trickle down to the smaller guys as cost becomes more affordable due to volume um, so yeah the big thing so virtual desktop infrastructure so the idea here is you guys all know about virtualization at this point and when you think about virtualization normally you think about virtualiz virtualizing servers right so you you create a cluster of active directory servers that are all virtualized and they do whatever the hell they do in the server rack, right? You know, use VMware, use Citrix, you use whatever you do, and there you go. Well, basically, vir virtual desktop infrastructure, what you do is the same idea as you virtualize the instances of the operating system, but this time you're using, uh, you're doing desktop operating systems. And then what happens is essentially, for most of these Windows-based ones, is you connect to those virtualized uh, desktops using remote desktop uh, from your local your local system, and there you go. So, so basically, what you're doing is is you're remotely accessing the virtual desktop computer. Uh, this is good for a lot of reasons because th at this point, uh, it allows you to have uh, redundancy and reliability and all that kind of stuff. So basically, in the enterprise world, virtual desktop infrastructure can be really, really good. You know, because if you've got a thousand computers out there, uh, you can control them all within one single cluster of servers, it just makes life a lot easier in a lot of ways. But the question then becomes is what about the small business market? So will will virtual desktop infrastructure then come into the small business market? And I would say uh, not no, but probably never. So with a lot of technologies, that's one of the things you have to think about is, you know, there's a lot of technologies that are out there and they're just so expensive, they're so complicated. Uh, you know, they go from the academic world to the enterprise world and then from the enterprise world, they trickle down to everybody else. And then there's some technologies out there that basically they're only good for, they're only really good for one environment. And I would argue like with virtual desktop infrastructure, it's really only good for the enterprise environment. And it's for a couple of reasons. Now, the first reason is, is because then clients are actually pretty damn expensive. Um, if you go look at, uh, uh, what are they called? Oh, the big manufacturers of thin clients. The things are foolishly expensive, to be honest with you. I mean, you're paying anywhere. A lot of the industrial grade or the the the, the real thin clients that you would be using um, are anywhere between three to six hundred dollars. So essentially, you're spending as much on a little thin client, uh, the like the physical hardware for the thin client, as you would be on a full fledged computer. So the issue is, is the first part is you don't get rid of the cost of the computer itself. Then beyond that, you then have the cost of building out the infrastructure. So I would argue for small businesses, you're actually adding to the cost. Now, why virtual desktop infrastructure is valuable in the enterprise world is because in the enterprise world, they're spending a lot of money on labor. So IT, you know, tech professionals, people going out and actually repairing computers, people going out and actually fixing things, right? So if you've got a thousand or 10,000 computers, hard drives fail, fans fail, all these different components within the computer fail, and you've actually got to, you've got to pay pay somebody to fix that, that, the whole desktop support division, right? So if you condense everything down to these little, little thin clients that are basically disposable, that saves you a lot of money because you don't have people running out, fixing hard drives, fixing video cards, fixing all this kind of stuff. Uh, so in the enterprise world, it makes sense. You go down to the, uh, the, the small business world and they're not paying that much uh, for labor for IT professionals, right? I mean, they, they pay you your little $500, $1,000 a month maintenance contract and that's it. They're just, you're, there's not a lot of cost savings for labor. So you don't get any cost savings from the hardware, the equipment. You don't get any real cost 
cost savings from the labor. So basically all you're doing is you're creating a more complicated system. And the problem is with any of these more complicated systems, you got a lot of weird issues that might go on. So, uh, so if you're going to be doing virtual desktop infrastructure, uh, now everything is going to be running on your little cluster of servers for the virtual desktop infrastructure, and all your users are going to be connecting to those servers. Now at that point, you have to make sure that the servers can actually handle the load that you're going to be putting through them. Not only that, but now you have to make sure that the network can support it. So all the switches that you have and the routers you have and even the cabling, right? There's a difference between sending FTP and SMTP and actually doing a remote desktop connection, especially doing a load of remote desktop connections. Um, so can all that equipment handle it? So one of the things you may run into is you go from a pretty, pretty solid system where everybody has their own little laptop or desktop computers, everything is working fine. You then go to this virtual desktop infrastructure, which isn't really saving them any money in the first place. And then you find that the network itself can't handle it. So then you're going in to repair the network and then you get issues, ah, right? Uh, as far as virtual desktop infrastructure is concerned, I mean, I could sit down and have a beer and argue with you about it. But I mean, I would spitball it at probably 500 users. Again, you know, like I said, this is kind of one of those spitball things. It depends on your environment and all that kind of stuff. But I would think about 500 systems, 500 and one systems and above. I would probably be looking at virtual desktop infrastructure, 500 and below. I probably wouldn't because I don't think I don't think you can afford the network reliability and redundancy because again now what you have to think about is if if you have let's say you have an office of a hundred computers right if any one of those computers like if any one widget on that network any one device on that network fails you still keep a large amount of functionality so if your router fails everybody can still type and they can still do basic file transfer and all that kind of stuff. If any switch fails, even the computers that are connected to that particular switch, they can still go into Outlook and respond to emails. They can still go to their contacts and get people's uh, addresses and that kind of thing. Um, they still have some functionality. Once you go to a virtual desktop infrastructure, if all of your network connections go to one switch and then that one switch fails, that means every computer that connects that switch is now offline. So you create, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, so what you have to do then is you have to then create redundancy. So then you have multiple routes, you have multiple switches, you have all this stuff, which is fine, which is technically very doable, but then you start talking about more money. And so, I mean, hands down, if you've got a less than 100, 100 computers on the network, it's going to cost you more money to do virtual desktop infrastructure. Like hands down, it will be less expensive to, for everybody just to have their own systems. And then, like I say, somewhere between 100 to 500, the, the line gets grayer and grayer, above 500, and, and, and you have what you have. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, virtual desktop infrastructure. The problem with virtual desktop infrastructure, so you guys understand why, why virtual desktop infrastructure hasn't become mainstream in the way we all thought it would become mainstream is frankly because computers have dropped in price uh, so substantially and frankly thin clients haven't. Uh, so back when I started looking at virtual desktop, desktop infrastructure, which was about 2000, like the first thin client I ever owned uh, was in about 2000, like it was an actual thin client, Westel, whatever the hell they're called, uh, one of those. Um, and at that time, the thin client cost like four or $500. Well, the thing was, is at that time, a thin client cost four or $500. And a computer was probably going to cost you somewhere between $1,000 to $1,500. So especially if you're looking at 100 computers, so even for a small environment, if I can buy this thing for $400, basically if I can save $600 per device, you know, 600 times, um, times 100, what is that, 6,000, I don't know. Uh, what is that, 600 times 100, so that's like $60,000 in savings. Makes sense, right? So back when they were first trying to deploy this VDI, uh, even a small environment, 100 computers, that's $60,000 in savings. 
uh, you know, then they have to build out the infrastructure. Say, let's say the infrastructure costs more money, but it ends up you get twenty thousand dollars in savings or thirty thousand dollars in savings, right? Because computers are so expensive, thin clients are inexpensive. I don't know why the price of thin clients has basically stayed about the same. Uh, even as tablets have come down, even as every other damn computer device in the world has come down, thin clients are about the same. So the issue is, is you now have thin clients for three or $400. So I mean, the real thin clients that you're gonna be buying for business environment are gonna be three to $400. And you have full-fledged computers that eh, cost four or $500. And then you think about it, and then you think about points of failure, and then you think about extra costs for building out the virtual desktop infrastructure, and you think about all these things, and it doesn't make as much sense. So the issue was before is when the price made sense, the technology wasn't mature enough uh, to be deployed really widely, and so by the time the technology became mature enough to really start use, really start deploying it, um, the, the the costs changed and now it just doesn't make any sense again there is no way in hell i would do vdi on under 100 i mean it's not even like this is one of those points where if a client came to me and said we want to pay you for vdi for under 100 they better have a damn good excuse they better have a really damn good excuse because i would literally refuse that job It'd be like i know you want to pay me that much money i'm not going to take it this is just no 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 um yeah, so that is my thought on VDI. So yeah, stay the hell away from it for small, small and medium-sized businesses. No way. Not. Honestly, like I say, five five hundred is the mark I would put. And I, honestly, I would probably go higher than that, like seven hundred or a thousand. Um, but five five hundred would be the minimum. Again, we could have a beer and argue about it, but that's somewhere around the minimum for the amount of computers uh, before I'd even think about VDI. Because VDI, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah.